The city of Flint, Michigan, faced national scrutiny and a series of lawsuits after dangerous levels of lead were found in the city's water in 2014. A new frontline investigation reveals that Flint's water is also linked to a deadly outbreak of Legionnaire's disease. The investigation found that more than 70 people died from the disease and an additional 20 people died from related symptoms. The documentary, entitled Flint's Deadly Water, premieres Tuesday on PBS. Here's a preview. Most people outside of Flint look at the lead issue, but the killer has been Legionnaires. A frontline exclusive investigation. And I plotted out each one of those deaths just to see if anything stood out. And in fact, it did. What did Michigan officials know? A lot of people didn't want us to expose what was happening and why it was happening. And was there a cover-up? Test the water. They should have tested the water. Abby Ellis is the film's director, and she joins me now on set. Abby, this is such an important story. Thank you so much for being with us. First of all, what prompted this investigation? Because to hear about this on the heels of the lead crisis would seem to, I think, a lot of people to be unconscionable. Right. So there was an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease almost immediately after the switch in water supplies, mm -hmm. but not very many people knew about it in the city of Flint or in the medical community in Flint until 2016 when the governor held a press conference. So this is over a year and a half later. And because of that, um, it's possible that cases went undiagnosed, which prompted us to investigate the outbreak more thoroughly to determine whether or not the outbreak could have been any bigger than officials reported. You talk about people being misdiagnosed. The misdiagnoses came as, as pneumonia. And reporter Jacob Kara, I know, spoke to one woman whose nephew actually uh, died from Legionnaires after being misdiagnosed. Let's go ahead and listen to that conversation. Did Marcus use the water here a lot? Did he? Yes, he did. He drank a lot of water. He would take showers, and he was sitting there for a long time and just let the water run in his face. And I was like, Marcus, you OK? And he was like, man, that water feel good. And he would always just sit in there and just, you know, let the water hit him in his face and, you so know, he's, in the chair. he's sitting in there, hot water, yes. breathing it in right in his face? Yes. He would just sit there in the chair and hold his face like this. Back when the outbreak was erupting in August 2014, Marcus went to the hospital. Doctors diagnosed him with pneumonia never testing for Legionnaires. A few weeks later, he was dead. So it's so critical, I think, for people to understand, first of all, how is it that people contract Legionnaires? So let me quick clarify. Marcus was diagnosed with pneumonia. Pneumonia, He was right. never tested for Legionnaires I disease, see. which is a huge problem. That happens when there's an outbreak and doctors don't know that there's an outbreak. They don't know to test for Legionnaires. Right. So they just treat you for pneumonia. And the antibiotics that they may give you for pneumonia won't treat Legionnaires. And so oftentimes, the patient gets sicker and, and can die. Right. So the way that uh, the symptoms that you get are, you know, cough, fever, throwing up. And again, if you don't know that there is this deadly outbreak, you may not go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And with Legionnaire's disease, you really need to be seen right away. It's super severe and it's fast acting. So the documentary reveals that an operations supervisor at the water plant warned his superiors that the water was too dangerous for public consumption, but it was distributed to the public anyway. So what happened there? Yeah, so that's a whistleblower, Matt McFarland. Uh, he was a foreman at the plant, and he knew going into the switch that there were systems at the plant that killed bacteria, some of them killed bacteria, and they weren't working. And he, you know, was calling his sister and, and talking to her and asking her, what is, you know, what do you suggest we do? The plant's not ready. I've begged my supervisors, please delay the switch. Don't make us run. And they made they made them turn on the plant anyway. And by they, it was really state officials who were in charge of this decision. And the plant was turned on even though they didn't have the systems necessary and they didn't have the staff adequately trained. And so this was a decision made by state officials in the city of Flint to both switch to the river and also to turn on the plant before it was ready. And, and there was there's definitely a lot of information out there that they knew the plant wasn't ready. And so what is happening at this point? Do we know, are people still contracting this disease? So what we know, based on our reporting, is that um, people who initially contracted Legionnaire's disease during the water, uh, water outbreak, the disease takes such a toll on your health that, you know, the standard public health epidemi or methodology for death, like to count towards the death toll is mm -hmm. 30 days. So if you, if you die within 30 days, you count. But because it takes such a toll on the body, we've been investigating initial survivors who've since died. 
So we found that there have been 20 survivors who've since died in the months and years to follow. So people in Flint are still, who've survived initially, are still very, very sick. And, and it's, I mean, it's tragic. It is tragic. And I wonder if, you know, for these families who have been through so much there in the city of Flint, what does justice even begin to look like for them at this point? It's a good question. Um, I think that people in Flint are exhausted. I think for people who got sick, you know, they, um, they've, been, they've been weighted down with medical bills for a really long time. They, a lot of them want an apology. And because there's this ongoing criminal investigation, they've never gotten one. Um, I think people in Flint want to see somebody held accountable for the outbreak and for the, for the water crisis as a whole. But they also want to be taken care of. You know, there are a lot of civil suits going on, um, and they want to be compensated for the, the damage that they've had to endure. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction to your report actually is and whether or not that might lead to perhaps some action and some accountability. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Abby Ellis, thank you so much for stopping by, thank you. Abby.